An old fogey won a football game last night in the UFL. Wade Phillips, 76 years old, for him. old fogey. I think it's great because, look, the guy has coached for 55 years. His father was the legendary O.A. bum Phillips, and I like saying it that way. I don't know what the O stood for. I don't know what the A stood for, but he went by bum. He had the big hat. Remember when he was with the Rams, I think? He wore the hat. On the way to the Super Bowl, he did win a ring with the Broncos, Super Bowl 50. People think he doesn't have a Super Bowl ring. He did get one yeah. in his 55 years of coaching. Right. But this is the first time he's a head coach of a team in a championship game. He had coached the Bills, the Broncos, the Cowboys. And he said a couple of years ago that he thinks he got frozen out of the NFL because of his age. And age discrimination, and I don't say this because I'm in the final approach to 60, it is real. Of course it in is. the NFL. Right. It is very real. Yeah. It has been around for as long as I've been covering the league and probably longer than that. Scouts get pushed out. Coaches get pushed out. And they make no qualms about it from time to time. They just come out and say, we want to go young. We want to go new. We want to go fresh. And you got to be careful about that because there are laws against it. And no one has ever challenged them on. Although there have been like, I think there was a lawsuit against the Raiders back 10, 12 years ago, and ultimately the Raiders won. Some scouts got pushed out, and they claimed it was age discrimination. It's tough to prove, very tough to prove. I've handled cases like that when I practice law. No one ever comes out and says, yeah, we wanted to get that old fogey out of here. I mean, they say that, the case settles. (laughs) They always come up with something else, and then you have to prove through circumstantial evidence and aggressive cross-examination and persuasive tactics with the jury that they're lying about why they really fired the person. It's it was not yeah. an easy thing to do it, at all. It wasn't an abrupt ending for him in the NFL. I mean, I will say that it is a little odd that way. I mean, for, you know, what he was doing, right. You know, the Rams, it wasn't like, it was just done with him. It, it wasn't Sean like they decided, Hey, you got me. Hey, you know what? I'm up to speed. I'm done with you. I'm no, no offense to Sean. McVay, no, no. That's how yeah. It felt. Just, right. I'm done with you. Yeah, Right. You know, and, 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 you know, organically worked out for him where they got Raheem Morris and all that. But I don't think it is odd in the fact that Wade and the, what he coached and what he was doing when the league kind of got done with them. Right. I mean, more times or not that, that guy that, Hey, we're done with you. You old fogey, get out of here. Like, it feels like the game has passed him by to, to a degree, right? It, it didn't feel that way with Wade Phillips. You feel you felt like, wow, you're, you're playing a Wade Phillips defense today. You better watch out still, right? So I think that was the, the odd thing about the Wade Phillips thing there altogether uh, that, that I don't even really know the full story and, and why. And nobody gave him another opportunity. And then, you know, as we know, too, sometimes it's just, hey, a coaching staff, McVay moves on. Hey, they sit out a year. Teams reevaluate. Oh, wait, you know, nobody knew Wade that became a new head coach to hire him, and all of a sudden becomes two years. And then it does become, well, you know, he's up there in age and he hasn't been in the game for two years. It doesn't take long to kind of get that type of stigma. But I, yeah, I really don't know the story behind that whole thing there. This is Wade Phillips from February, actually March 3rd, 2023, a website called profootballtalk.com. Don't waste your time reading. Crap like that. I hate to say it, but I think it's age, Phillips said. It's hard to beat my record as a coordinator, so there's got to be another reason. But that's okay. I'm glad to be doing what I'm doing. At that time, he was the coach of the XFL's Houston Roughnecks. After the XFL and the USFL merged, even though the Roughnecks still continued, C.J. Johnson went from the Houston Gamblers of the USFL, which folded, to the Houston Roughnecks, and Wade Phillips took over for former NBC analyst Heinz Ward who had coached the San Antonio Brahmas last year and now Phillips has taken them to the UFL championship I remember Chris and this was 2017 this was when the Super Bowl was in Houston it was the same week that I met you this big giant came down to Beanstalk and walked over to me and like hovered over me with this big smile on his face and introduced himself at that time it was just me and stats wherever stats would happen to be but they they had just hired McVeigh in LA and they had him do the rounds with Wade Phillips. Yeah, like Wade I do Phillips remember was that. his was his lieutenant. Yeah, was right. his, like looking out for the kid. <laughs> and it right. was the two of them together, and they were like joined at the hip until they weren't. That's what's made. That's what made it weird. And again, I nothing. Hey, look, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, and you ultimately won a Super Bowl without Wade Phillips there. But you went to a Super Bowl with Wade, and there was this vibe that McVeigh and Wade were fused together. And it sounds like Wade wanted to keep coaching based upon 
his comments from last year when he was hired by the XFL. So good for him. The Brahmas will face the Birmingham Stallions on Sunday in St. Louis. The Battlehawks lost. I thought they'd rig the game for the Battlehawks to win. I Hey, good job, UFL. Integrity there. They didn't throw a bunch of flags That's to help a big the upset, Battlehawks huh? have a home game. I don't know how big of an upset it was, yeah. but the Battlehawks are the only team that's drawing a decent crowd. Right, right. So the UFL championship is in St. Louis, but the Battlehawks won't be playing in it. It'll be the Brahmas. And the Stallions. And it's actually not bad. I've been skeptical in recent years of these spring leagues because they have felt a little fly-by-night. The AAF fell apart because of money. The XFL had a shot in 2020, but the pandemic caused it to, to pull the plug. That was when Vince McMahon had it. Then he gave up on it. The USFL came back. NBC had the games on 2022 and 2023. And then last year... Both the Uf- USFL and the XFL were in the same offseason, and I think they decided, you right, know, right. there really isn't enough room in the spring for two distinct leagues. Let's come together. They took eight teams, eight teams, and they turned it into one eight-team league. And <laughs> I just – I feel like I've, en- I've actually enjoyed it this year. In past years, it felt like a burden – and drudgery to watch the games. It felt like less than. This year, it really hasn't felt like that. It's been exciting. And you know what got my attention? You got a guy there banging 64-yard field goals. That was the thing that got my attention, hmm. Jake Bates, the Michigan kicker. And I'm thinking, you know, they got, they got guys that can play at the NFL level. Sure. They do. Sure. And, and plenty of these guys, after next Sunday, will end up signing with NFL teams and competing for roster spots in training camp. Yeah. No, hey, look, it does look like better quality football. I'm not going to say that I'm sitting there and I'm sitting down for three hours and watching games and doing that, but I am, you know, giving little look-ins here and there and, and checking it out. And I will say that I do think it's a, it's it's better quality than the, the last two leagues you, you mentioned there, right? But I still think, and again, it's great for the NFL – it is. It's great for some of these players, too, who got kind of kicked out of the league and maybe still deserve to be in the league, right? And they get to reprove themselves and get on a training camp and, and you know, maybe get another shot here. That's great. I mean, the league no- needs that. We know that. We talked about that last week with the offseason and developing players and all that, right? It's it's still, though, the, the, the main problem will be what you talk about. It's just the, the draw. The, the main, what am I tuning in for? Who is it that I want to see that is special or it's special that I'm tuning in for? And I know they got to hang in there for a little while and make a name for themselves and hopefully they can create that. But, you know, they're not there yet. There are some things they need to improve on by way of PR salesmanship they make some decisions that really don't make a lot of sense for example last night's game started at 7 eastern an hour before the commencement of game two of the nba finals yeah, right you got all freaking day to play that game play it five to eight leading into the nba finals why are you overlapping and they'll come over oh, the second screen bull crap take the whole afternoon's the, yours. The Yankees were Take on my afternoon. second screen. Sorry. So, yeah, yeah. They, I didn't have a third. <laughs> yeah. So, I, they, they've done other things like that. I don't want to bash them, but there has been bad decision making. For example, for example, we knew last year the NFL was going to adopt the XFL kickoff. It was just a matter of time. We knew that. You and I both knew that, right? Right. Uh, So when the XFL and the USFL come together and they come up with their rules, what do they do? They don't use the XFL kickoff. They use the USFL kickoff. And think of how much more interest they would have had this year if right after the NFL adopts the XFL kickoff and the UFL has it, people are going to want to watch what this kickoff's all about. I would have taken That was a uh, missed opportunity. You're right. That was definitely a missed opportunity because that is something that I would have tuned in for actually to go, let me look at this a little more and wrap my head around it and see what's going on here and see if I can tactically figure it out. You're right. That, that was a missed opportunity that certainly would have intrigued, you know, fans like me and, and others to, to kind of hey. look at the schematical things of that situation. Dwayne, Mr. Johnson, if I may call you Rock, if you're looking for a strategic advisor for the 2025 season, I'm your man for the appropriate fee. There are plenty (laughs) of things, though, that they could do to improve the product, the presentation of the product. They need to put teams in cities where the fans will come out. Seattle was performing very well 
in the XFL, it got left out. I mean, really, it's St. Louis getting 30,000 plus and these other cities can't. I mean, it's a big deal if they get 10,000. And you see, like in Birmingham on Saturday, they they shut off half the stadium and nobody's in it. So the other half is where they have the people. So they have shots that actually make it look like people are at the right, game. And speaking right. of Birmingham, your guy, Matt Corral, they benched Adrian Martinez, the likely UFL MVP, Birmingham Stallions quarterback. They were nine and one. Only loss was to old fogey Wade Phillips, San Antonio Brahmas. Right. Nine and one. Adrian Martinez, presumptive MVP, second half, trailing to the Michigan Panthers. Out went Martinez, and in came your guy, Matt Corral. And even though he threw an interception on his second pass, they stuck with him, and they won the game. Wow, that's that's impressive. Well, good good for him. Yeah, those are the guys we're talking about. You know, need reps. Not enough to go around for younger quarterbacks who need development. And he's a guy that's, you know, as you know, and as I know, and, you know, I was wrong about regardless, but has talent. He does have talent. The kind of guy that – this situation would benefit, like just, you know, some polish, get out there, reps, all that. Uh, that's cool. Cool story. Um, interesting to hear that, that they bench the, the MVP in the, the biggest game of the year, though. That's kind of crazy. You don't get a whole lot of media coverage on it, too. I was searching yesterday to see some quotes from head coach Skip Holtz as they embark on the week in advance of the championship game. Big story. Are you going with the MVP of the league? You're going to hand out that award today, and he's likely going to get it. Or are you going to go with Matt Corral, the third-round <laughs> yeah, right. pick of the Carolina Panthers, who right. flamed out of the NFL? Who are you going to go with? If that was the NFL, that would be the story of the week. Right. It's all anybody would talk about. So, I don't know. Look, pe- pe- people, it's funny on Twitter. Oh, the, how much are they paying you? And my response is, not nearly enough. I mean, what am I going to do? It's football, and it's fun. And don't we want to have fun, and don't we want to watch football when we can watch football that is fun? The spring football had never felt fun fun to me before this year so that probably means they'll fold and it'll go away and I'll have nothing to enjoy by way of football next spring uh one last thing before we get to the news of the day I had a dream last night and I don't have any reason to think there's any validity to this whatsoever but I did obviously if you look at the teams this year and what the expectations are entering the season but I dreamed that Super Bowl 59, the two teams are the Saints and the Titans. Wow. So if anybody out there wants to, you know, roll the dice on that matchup and bet that that's going to be, those are going to be the, the two. I, I, don't, I don't know who won. We were picking winners, and I picked the Titans, and that was a big deal because the Saints are the favorites in the game, according to my dream. But Saints and the Titans – the two Super Bowl teams. Wow, you can make somebody billions season. right there if they put money on that one. I mean, that that that'd be the long shot. And on top of that, you know what else? Nobody cares about your dream. So move on with another story. I know, okay, I know. Move but on. I, know, I know. Somebody <laughs> told you that in your ear. That's not one you came up with. No, somebody I came up with that cares. myself. Nobody, I, nobody came up with that in my ear. Courtney but I'm wouldn't just do saying, that. To wouldn't you. that Pete be something? Would've. Yes. Let's it remember. Would. Right. Let's remember that. Let's remember that. Okay, I I'll remember old Fogey's dream from June, whatever. What the Super Bowl matchup was. Thank you, old fogey. Okay. Brahma's Stallions now, Saints, Titans later. I can tell you I did not have a dream that it would be the Brahma's and the Stallions in the UFL championship game. I thought it was going to be the the Renegades and the Panthers, according to the dream that I had before the season started. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.